In this video, we're going to talk about, or at least introduce, financial markets and institutions and the place that they, uh, that they take in the decision-making process. So uh, first of all, let's think about how do we transfer money between savers and borrowers, right? How does money get exchanged? We could do direct transfers. Uh, so this is a lot more uh, maybe individuals, right? People transferring money between individuals. Um, it'd be very difficult to, to think how a corporation like, um, like uh, P&G, how could they go out and individually find uh, investors, right? Um, they have maybe millions of investors. They have to identify each one of those. That's what direct transfer refers to. Most transactions refer to them when, when corporations are trying to gather money from investors uh, through investment banks and other financial intermediaries. And we'll talk about some of those different types uh, in, in a little bit later video, but they're basically institutions whose job it is to connect the people that have money that they want to invest with businesses and governments that um, need money. So what is this process? Again, the whole idea here is how do we get money from those people that have funds, the suppliers of capital? In fact, you notice here they have excess funds. Not everybody has what we might refer to as excess funds, right? But in general, as a population, there's more money in the hands of individuals than what those individuals need. The demanders, on the other hand, are businesses and governments that need money in order to expand and do business. So what is a market, right? It's a place where goods and services are exchanged. So a financial market obviously is a place where people come together one way or another to transfer funds between them. So what types of financial markets are there? Well, we have financial markets that are physical assets and financial assets. So physical assets would be like cars and groceries, etc. Financial assets are things like um, stocks and bonds. Spot versus future. Spot refers to the current day. That's current pricing, current purchases. Futures purchases refers to a type of a derivative security. Again, we'll talk about those later. That's um, It's a different type of an investment where you're actually investing for a future transaction. We'll talk a little bit about money versus capital markets in, in an instant. And we'll also talk about primary versus secondary markets. Specifically, those, those two topics are, are kind of important to understand how managers and investors make decisions. But there's also public versus private kinds of transactions. Public transactions is what we think about. When you think about stocks and bonds, private is another way of gathering funds. Sometimes companies will do things and they'll do it behind closed doors. Now this doesn't mean they're bad or they're doing something not transparent, but sometimes they just don't need to go to the public to do things. For instance, if P&G just needed Five million dollars. They wouldn't issue a bond for that, right? They wouldn't issue a new stock issue for that. They may go on and say, hey, we have an investor that we know of. One of our investors say, hey, we need five million bucks. So it's done behind 
closed doors. Now, there are certain rules and regulations for this. So it's not necessarily not transparent, right? It's, it, there, there are rules that, that are in place for this. But let's talk about some of the other topics first. What types of markets are there? We can define markets by dollars. Where does the money go? The primary market is when securities are issued for the first time, right? It's the only market in which the issuer is directly involved in the transaction. This is what we sometimes can refer to as an IPO, right? It's an initial public offering, the first time the stock was ever issued. Secondary market transactions are transactions that happen after the first one. So this is just where investors are trading with investors. Now, the difference between the two is who gets the money, right? In the primary market, this is the only time that the company gets money from its investors. In the secondary markets, the company gets nothing other than notification that the ownership has changed. So if you think about time, that's just another way of expressing financial markets. We're talking about life expectancy, right? What is the life of the security that we're talking about? Money markets are financial markets that are comprised of securities have life expectancy at issue of less than one year. Capital markets then is everything else, right? So capital markets refer to things like stocks and bonds. Money markets, there are lots of securities. Again, I don't wanna say there are a lot of them. There are a, a quite a few different types of securities that at issue have less than one year of life. Treasury bills, United States Treasury bills, by definition, have a lifespan of less than one year. So again, let's kind of talk about it again, it's a financial relationship for money markets, right? Um, uh, treasury bills is the example I gave you. Commercial paper is issued. There's things called negotiable CDs. These are not the CDs at your bank. Generally, these things are very low risk and they're very short in time frame. Capital markets, again, the key capital market securities are bonds, which is long-term debt, common stock, which is equity or ownership. Again, these are long-term things. So we have three basic securities here, bonds, common stock, and preferred stock. Now, preferred stock is just a special form of ownership that has features of both bonds and stocks. We'll talk a little bit about preferred stock, but quite frankly, there are not a lot of companies that issue preferred stock. So the last uh, type of investment we want to talk about are something called derivatives. And what is a derivative? It's a security that's value is derived from a price of another security. These things are what we refer to as options and futures. So an option is the right to do something later on, like the right to buy a stock. So its value is dependent on the value of the stock. We can use this in two basic ways. We can use it to hedge or reduce risk. A little bit beyond what this course is all about, but certainly an investments course would uh, look much deeper into how we use these securities to help reduce risk. You know, certainly we could speculate with these, right? You can buy these things and invest in them to produce a profit just like you would want to buy a stock. Uh, however, uh, we do know that these transactions, if you're speculating, these transactions can magnify risk 
rather than reduce risk. So again, those are derivatives. Again, we won't talk a lot about them uh, in these videos, but uh, um, it, it is a very important uh, concept uh, when companies are thinking about ways to minimize the risk that they take. Look forward to talking to you in the next video.